Hi everybody and welcome today to this very exclusive interview might I add. I'm interviewing the wonderful Chantelle Carter who is the founder of Love and Nudes. Now this is an incredible business and we're going to be sharing the details with you later on with this interview. It is an intimate line of skin tone bra and pants or women and it is there to represent the diversity of the world. So nude tones for all, and rightly so. And we're going to be hearing all about that. Now, in today's interview, we're going to talk about quite a range of topics and look about lots of things, and especially mental health and well-being in today's world, which is very important. And it is a real pleasure to have you on here today, Chantelle. And how are you? How is everything going? Thank you. I'm like so excited to be here with you and chatting with you um things are good today it's sunny yeah. <laughs> i'm grateful the weather is the weather is wonderful mm -hmm. ah yeah i'm just moving along doing the best i can because it's a challenging time with mm -hmm. the pandemic that we're yeah. all going through and uh yeah just keeping pushing forward. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's that, it's that moment in time. It's been 2020, I don't think any of us expected on that New Year's Eve as we were heading into the new year itself, what this would bring. What oh my has gosh. that looked like <laughs> for you? What has the last six months been like, Chantal? To be honest, Emily, this has been the most, one of the most difficult years of my life. Wow. Um, yeah, like like you said earlier, um, who would have thought that this would happen? And it's just it's just layers of um, things. You know, I was recently separated at the end of 2019, so I moved into someplace new. Yeah. And my um, yeah my um, my parents got separated. <laughs> then the pandemic happened yeah and black lives matter so <laughs> not to depress anybody but just yeah. all those things combined were yeah. like really 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 hard to uh to manage and um i um struggled with me mental health issues in the past and it kind of brought it back to the forefront you know yeah. like anxiety <laughs> Yeah, anxiety and depression, you know, happened. And um, I was in my head a lot about with all sorts of negative things. So, you know, this year has been um, challenging in that way. However, I'm moving past that, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to say. So, and I'm like, I'm happy to talk to you about yeah. um, the like, struggles because it's like, it's, there's a lot of um, shame behind um you know mental health depression anxiety or whatever that's that's going on and i want to contribute to talking about it more so it might help somebody you know and just to know that you don't have to be ashamed no about um what you're going through and you're not and that you're not alone definitely not you're an amazing woman for sharing that <laughs> seriously that's you've got a big heart to to <laughs> to reflect on all of that and also share with us how that makes you feel that's their raw feelings that can make somebody feel very vulnerable so i want to say that i feel very blessed that you are happy to share that with us and we're going to share this interview with lots of people and you are right talking about these things makes other people feel like they're not alone and i think that is the biggest key to all of this all humans feel and we have those emotions and i don't understand why there is that stigma that it's as though only so many emotions within that whole range are allowed to be spoken about. 
happiness, joy, oh, that's all okay. But when it comes to some of the other emotions, which are all part of who we are and being human, somehow we, I don't know, lock those other emotions in a little box somewhere and don't know how we're meant to talk about it or share it in fear that it could be the contrary to, you know, happiness, joy, um, all yeah. those wonderful feelings. So yeah, where, where would you like to start? Where would you well, like to start? Uh, just going off of what you said, like ha happiness, joy, and um, those are real feelings or pleasant feelings. And, but also, also are the, the negative emotions that we have that, many of us are taught to shun or we shouldn't have it. You shouldn't be angry. I grew up with that. You'd be like, you know, you don't have a, like, don't, as a child, you can't be angry. If you're angry, you're, you're, you're bad. You're not good. And there are real emotions. And I think our, no, I know actually our society, well, I know here in North America, yeah. promote happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. Like you're supposed to be happy all the time. Yeah. Joy, like happy all the time and it's it's not true <laughs> it's not it is all the time but that's what's promoted you know happy like you should be happy so if you're not yeah i think it makes things worse for 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 people that have uh, mental health issues if you're not happy you think something's wrong with you yeah you know and then then there's shame behind that mm -hmm. you hide that because everybody else looks, and then it gets exasperated. Yeah. Everybody else looks happy. Everybody else looks like they have it together. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone me. likes to show the shiny bits, don't they? And there's a fear yeah. of showing the bits that don't seem so polished. And yet they're the bits that are real. And exactly. They exactly. belong. They totally belong. And... I understand where you mentioned about being angry. It's, it can be seen as negative, but actually it's an emotion and it's a feeling. And I think, and I've certainly found myself in more recent times, it's, it's so important to honor your feelings. That is how yes. you feel. Honor yourself, love yourself. Now, when you mentioned about anxiety and those feelings of depression, is there a particular thing that triggers that, that you found? Is there a pattern? Can you see it coming before it starts? Or how do you find yourself in that situation where those emotions of anxiety, those feelings of anxiety and that experience of depression come about? What, what do you find to be the the moment where that then presents itself i'm still learning it yeah however um this spring it was at heightened like never before yeah. and i asked myself or oh god why is this happening like what is going on mm -hmm. what am i being shown here yeah and I think my, like my anxiety, it, it comes, it comes up with the negative self-talk. Yeah. And, um, also, I feel like because we're in this pandemic and we just have to sit there, <laughs> think, and because that's what I took it as. It's like, okay, you know, this is time to do self-work. It, everything that I suppressed in my life, mm -hmm. that, that I was not allowed to feel. Yeah started to come up yes yeah. i'm thinking this is what i i guess is what's ha like what has happened mm -hmm. this time and the anxiety was such an awful feeling i wouldn't wor wish it on my worst enemy it was um i see that i'm driven by my phys like physical sensations if i don't like the way something feels in my body and i never realized that before yeah it would stop doing it or avoid it or like put it down yeah and then and i like i i'm imagining how i did that repeatedly over years and years and years i yeah. never let myself 
feel yeah. feelings that I wasn't allowed to feel. Yeah. And they're all stuck in my body, causing, I think, depression and like anxiety. And it was a feeling in my solar plexus area. Nobody knows what that is. That's like, like kind of my, under my chest, under my heart, like my stomach area and like my heart area. It was just this constant jittery, yeah, horrible feeling. And it's like, I would feel it, get scared of it. Yeah. And it would feed into it. It was like a cycle. <laughs> you know, I had to take antidepressants just to calm it. I'm, I'm not saying that that's what everybody had to do, but for me, that's what helped take the edge off and move me forward. But I, I noticed it's, um, I judged myself a lot. Yeah. Criticism. Yeah. You know, as comparing myself to other people. Yeah. I'm wanting everything to be perfect before I move forward. I'm looking back on that. Yeah. I, caused anxiety yeah you know so i'm just working on releasing releasing that yeah um so yeah that's how like the the depression and anxiety is triggered by i don't know I, it's like it's a combination of yeah and like physical sensations and yeah. like, and, like and, and the emotions that go come with the negative thoughts, the negative physical sensations. Like my body's telling me like, oh, there's something doesn't feel good here. Mm -hmm. And start thinking about, oh my God, <laughs> like, you know, what is this? And then I'd get an emotion, a negative emotion, and it would just all feed into each other mm -hmm. and, and snowball. But now I'm catching myself. Yeah. To catch myself of what I'm thinking, like what I'm thinking about. And I think it especially happens when, because like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm, doing, I'm constantly just uncomfortable doing new things, <laughs> doing different things. Yeah, yeah. And my mind wants to keep me comfortable it, in yeah. a safe, safe place yeah. a thing that knows already. <laughs> and I'm trying to get out of that. So it's, my mind keeps telling me, no, yeah, you can't do that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this, you, you, it's a boundary. I almost think that, you know, here's like the calm water and your body's there just saying, hey, just keep me in the calm water where I can stand up in it. But over there in the ocean, there are the bigger waves and you're mastering the tools to take them on. And you know that you're going to be okay, but you also know that that version of okay is going to take you out of that comfort zone and then give you new experiences, which are so, you know, overwhelming and new. But then I guess over time, those uncharted waters then become your new comfortable and exactly experienced sailors of the sea as it were and i suppose do you do you find then is that part of all of those feelings and the the undercurrent of of that reach and that desire for perfectionism and constantly looking at you know, being, I suppose, critical of yourself, has that served you anyway with your business, with love and nudes, with your company? What would you say has driven and made that become a success? Has some of that frustration and that anxiety turned into what has then become a passion behind your business. Can you see any parallels to those, the purpose of feeling one way to drive you to do something in another way? I think that I, I, I believe that I started Love and Nudes. Um, and I think it is a lot of the things that I suppressed. Um, because it's a, it's a skin tone uh, line of bras and panties that reflect uh, diverse skin 
tone colors, like nude for somebody with my skin tone, somebody darker than me. Yeah. They're made for that. And I remember when I was growing up, I was constantly questioned about my skin tone and the way I looked and yeah. could I turn white and, and I just wanted to fit in and I just, you know, so I tried to please people yeah. into what they expected I should be and what I should look like. Yeah. I remember somebody ta asking me, hey, can your skin turn white? And I, and I remember we're just kids, right? Uh, but but it's like, can your skin turn white? And I remember that feeling, like, what do you mean? But I found a solution. I remember I scratched my arm. Wow. And I was like, yeah, you see, look, oh my it's white. Gosh. You know. But I think behind that, there. Yeah, well, there was feelings of, well, I'm being quite, I'm not good enough. I'm being questioned about, you know, why I look the way I look. Yeah. So there was a lot of that, like, direct and subliminal messages that I wasn't good enough, you know, especially as like a, a Black person. Yeah. I, I really feel that, um, and just having to push through that. Mm -hmm. I feel that that's how my passion came to be. I yeah. saw the um, injustices yeah. in the world and the systemic racism, because I could see yeah. it, you know, it's like, well, why is it always, you know, why is nude only beige? Yeah. I worked in the fashion industry too. I was a stylist and it was like, okay, <laughs> what is it going to be about me or did, like, when am I going to be included? Yeah. So that frustration, you know, drove my, and my love of fashion drove me to try and do something about it. Yeah. And I really feel for people who are struggling mm -hmm. um, with mental illness, which not feeling that they're, that they're good enough because I, str I struggled with the same things you know and um yeah i just want <clears throat> people to know that they're they're not alone and that you know everything that we go through i believe i know it sounds like a cliche it's like for a reason yeah and we just have to kind of look at well why is this happening yeah and really do the inner work personal development for me has been like key to my road to like recovery. And it's not very, it's not easy. I'm not saying that at all, but it's, it's doable. It is. If you yeah. want to feel better, um, it's a combination of like for me, okay, I take antidepressants, but it can't just be that. I have to do that and I got to do the inner work <laughs> and it feel my feelings, you know? <laughs> feel my feelings and just let them go. Wow. You know? Whether it's happiness or sadness, but especially the negative feelings, you know, it's like you weren't allowed to have them. <laughs> so you just push them down or just kind of deflect or try to sort of skim over it, you know, or say that, oh yeah, I'm mad, but at least it's like this, or it's least, you know, this didn't happen. And that's kind of like not acknowledging. Yeah the full feeling just acknowledge like yeah. acknowledge it and be okay with being upset and then just let it go yeah because when you just push it down it doesn't go anywhere the energy just stays in your body yeah and it, comes up it, as depression anxiety <laughs> it's, there's there's all these it's so interesting and mm -hmm. Feelings are feelings, and that means every kind of feeling. And I mm -hmm. do really think it's so important for mental well being that we recognize that as individuals. Imagine being given a Sunday dinner and told that only half of the plate is okay to eat. And if you eat the other half or even look at it, then that's bad, you know, it's negative. Like, 
that that's crazy like the whole yeah. meal is a rounded meal for you to live a healthy life and it's the same it's that principle that you know to, everything's in balance and you're right like you said at the beginning you can't just be happy 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 all the time because <laughs> that is not how we're made up and yeah. so it's every feeling and that's where i think it's so important that as individuals we allow ourselves and give ourselves the permission for every feeling to pass through us because that is mm -hmm. ours to experience and i really can resonate with that the the process of doing work on yourself yeah. learning about yourself as almost if for the first time as you become an older person and and beginning to get to know who you are what does make you feel happy what makes you feel sad where your boundaries are and what makes you feel angry frustrated you know unsettled and i, I do think it's a very healthy process to experience what we as individuals feel again yeah. so many variables in our life to understand like that makes me sad that makes me angry that makes me happy they are my boundaries for all of those different feelings and yeah. that i think is part of getting to know ourselves but i think sometimes it's right as you mentioned that certain feelings we're not taught perhaps or shown or allowed to nurture those to understand that side of ourselves for uh, quite some time and you know that comes in many forms sometimes it can be you know the the environments that you have been exposed to or grown up in sometimes yeah. it can be you know the schools that you went to the places where you worked you know society the media well, everybody thinks the same, you know yeah. <laughs> And, and actually, it's sometimes I think when you sit with yourself and have that calm with yourself, the, it becomes so simple. It is as simple as I'm a human with feelings and I can enjoy and experience all of them. And none are good or bad. They are all but feelings. And yeah. it, it's interesting because it does. It's the same, you know, the, the growth of anything can be... I suppose what's the right word, but it could be slowed down or accelerated by what you give yourself permission to, if you like, unlock or accept. And that's where I think people then fall into the category of comparison because you think, why does that other person make it look so easy with something that they're doing? And it might just be that that particular feeling or thought process they have to that particular task in hand might be wired differently to ours where we have a block that we've got to do some inner work on then they may look at us and go why does that person make it look so easy to do yes. and they're then feeling the comparison or the frustration and actually it might be that that's where we have a natural uh, you know thought process that seems easy and then they're looking and thinking what but we don't have the block there so i right. i love that you said that it's so <laughs> so true because you know what yeah. when i was feeling at my worst sometimes you know i would get and i feel like you know god speaks to you in mysterious ways <laughs> yeah. um i would get a message from somebody saying oh my gosh mm -hmm are on fire. <laughs> fire oh my gosh your feed looks amazing and i'm like in my head really <laughs> if only you knew you know i'm you're crying right now oh, I'm not, I got it off. <laughs> so speaking to what you said you know because you're i'm looking at somebody else saying oh my gosh the comparison look at them yes amazing like <laughs> i didn't hear that how is that gonna happen for me that's not gonna happen for me oh my gosh there's so much better than i am 
you know, and then you have somebody tell you something about yourself that you didn't even see, like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. What's, you know, like, oh, you're inspiring. And I'm like, really? Yes. <laughs> and it, everybody brings something to the table. And sometimes we don't know what that is, but I see, you know how when um, on some of these computer games, you, you start and it's a, it's, you've got to solve it or there's a mystery or detective for, and it's all about solving something to unlock something else. And I think if they, you adopt that principle for yourself, that all of the information is there, all of the solutions are there. It's a process, it's a journey, somewhat even a challenge and of, of finding those treasures. And I'm going to say treasures because they are, it's the treasures, it's the jigsaw pieces that make you whole. They're there, it's just going and finding them. And when you find them, it unlocks something else. And you might meet somebody else on that journey who assists you in finding that part of the puzzle that then yes. it you to the next part and so people will come in and out of our lives i do believe at different times for different reasons and for different causes but once you continue to establish that really strong sense of self then you can't but bloom or blossom as an individual and and find that next run on the ladder that makes you feel more centered as to who you are perhaps oh yeah uh, i strongly believe that that everybody comes to your life for uh, like um a reason yeah. uh, you don't if you're not open to see that if you're stuck in your old way of thinking yeah. and a lot of it is negative like can be negative you won't see that so that's why yeah i think you know working on yourself and yeah you know loving yourself and accepting yeah you are as a person good bad ugly yeah <laughs> perfect and i think well i know that there's always an opposite yeah happiness but you have to have sadness mm -hmm. to be able to appreciate happiness yeah absolutely um yeah because it's like you if you were happy all the time it wouldn't be real and you wouldn't know what happiness really was or or joy no so somebody told me that there's always an opposite there is you have to know to know good you have to know the bad yeah <laughs> it's like a superstar yeah. effect the pull, yeah the pull you know your muscles are in pairs everything is paired if you look in life there's there's so many in nature and just everywhere everything there are pairs of so many things um, yeah and that's because you know it's it's about balance and and i exactly. think it's the beauty in that and and finding that balance and i guess when it comes to the side of nurturing yourself then Chantal when it comes to doing things and treating yourself like you would treat a best friend what do you do for yourself to I don't know yeah just treat yourself are you um, all sorts okay. of different things yeah what might that be well, I learned to, um, I'm learning to self-soothe. I have a picture of myself when I was a little girl. Yeah. And uh, on my phone and I look at me every day and I, even when something doesn't go right, I'm like, okay, you know, it's okay. I suit like, I soothe that inner child. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, like soothing myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, realizing that the way I talk to myself, I wouldn't speak to a friend like that. Yeah. So I've stopped doing that because yeah. I used to think that, you know, criticizing and judgment, that's what I grew up on. Like self judgment was, would, would motivate me yeah. to, to do better, but it, it, I learned it doesn't, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I, I'm gentler to myself, accepting, 
of things that when they don't go my way, like I get up early this morning, but didn't happen. Yeah. And normally I would feel like mad at my, I got up two hours later than I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And normally I'd be upset with myself and judge myself. And it's like, oh yeah, I me, mean, you're so lazy. And you know, like things like that would go through my head. And it's like this morning I was like, okay, you know what? Next time. It's okay. Yeah. You know, I was just tired, you know, until I get over this. Yeah. But it is instead of beating myself up and I meditate daily, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do that. Yeah. I journal yeah. to get thoughts out. Yeah. And I, um, yeah, I talk to God a lot. <laughs> yeah. For his like support. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a list of things. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. On positive like mindsets and um, not just positive mindsets, like how to think, how to learn, you know. Yeah. I listen to I listen to things like that mm -hmm. to to keep me going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I yeah I, I take care of myself, and I actually stop and smell flowers, literally. <laughs> <laughs> the good ones, yeah. As long as you don't inhale a wasp or a thing. Yeah. Like, oh, hello, we were sniffing it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's I true. take walks. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, true. that's how I, mm -hmm. I take, like, I take care of myself like daily and I throw in a treat. I need to treat myself a little bit more, but something that's cost effective, like, okay, get a manicure, you know, some do things to take care of me. Yeah. I'll do um, a mask at home. And, and I noticed when I started, um, stop talking to myself negatively like um a domino effects happens it's like you care more about feeding yourself well yes that's for me you're hiding from the blinds <laughs> <laughs> it's so sorry the, the blinds just keep doing their thing and i'm just like okay um yeah just moving around a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I found that, yeah, I started to treat, treat myself mm -hmm. or my body better <clears throat> on a whole. Like, okay, I'm worried about, okay, well, what am I eating? Where before I wouldn't think about that as much. So it's like a kind of like a domino of, uh, effect. Yeah. One last thing I, I want to say, like you're talking about boundaries before, and I start to take care of myself and really reflect and see, I, 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 I was able to, say to somebody what I didn't like. And it's like, no, I'm not accepting this. Yeah. Like anymore. And I took my power back. And it's like, it gave me like such a se sense of confidence. Yeah. That helped me move. I didn't realize it would connect to other areas of my life. Yeah. You no, know? but where, if you're one way, scared and insecure like in this area of your life your let's say your relationships right you're going to be scared and insecure in your business or your your with your money like it doesn't it's not <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't just say i'll just sit over here for a while I'm not, I'm not gonna bother any of those other areas no it's fine i'll just sit here and sip a gin and tonic no it does it's it's very true and i think What's so interesting, we're touching on so many things here, and I love that because it isn't just about that mental well being and mental health, it's about entrepreneurship, it's about <laughs> life, it's about you know, you very kindly and bless you for sharing that with us about the separation, not just of your own experience, but mm -hmm. then per parental separation and, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, let's just throw the pandemic in there, you know, just because. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hey, why not? But it's it it does all of the way that we feel as individuals and those emotions that go and pass through us or don't that we kind of pretend aren't there but are really there. It's like we're having a game of hide and seek with ourselves and we don't know it. And those those feelings, they don't just sit with you know they're like oh I'm back home again. Oh, I'll just have those feelings here. Thank you. No, they go <laughs> through, you know 
the the workplace they will travel with you in the car and it may affect road rage that was me yeah <laughs> and then even when it comes to like we mentioned before that comparison but where in business in running your own business those feelings and um, can then be the barrier to your next step forwards in exactly the business. Oh, we could touch on imposter syndrome. We could touch on so many things, I think, and it'd all be oh. relevant. But it's so true. And I do believe that in particularly both of us having our own companies, I know that those feelings are, 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 are totally shared where it comes to, you know, thinking we, we were laughing weren't we, before we started recording, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, there's days where I think I just want to go chill on a beach and <laughs> once an hour because somebody wants to rent a surfboard, like that's cool. And, I, you know, because you want to go to the other extreme because you need a break sometimes. But yes, um, it's true. I, I do think that and you're rightly so. All of those feelings, they permeate everything. So once you start to work on you, once you start to work out how you feel about everything and accept and embrace all those feelings and emotions and let them pass through you and sit with you, then yeah, it, it starts to unlock. Like we mentioned, you know, different areas that again you said you know something happened and it opened up another way of thinking or looking at something and once you started speaking better to yourself that had a domino effect elsewhere so exactly mental well-being covers so many things and I mean when it comes to your business and I absolutely I want to say that you are a superstar and a champion by the way Chantal. You really oh thank are. you and Emily thank you for doing this too oh, like it's so no, good to be sure. able to speak about <laughs> speak about this like yeah my struggles and you know it's really been therapeutic you it, know I hope it helps someone else Oh, it, it will. I mean, just even having this conversation, just even the, the two of us. But the two, yeah, the two of us. Well, like e even, and we're going to be sharing this and people will resonate and, and, and feel just the same way and have lots of other like layers that come into it as well. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's where... And I want to go back to that passion that you mentioned that did drive you to start Love and Nudes. Yes. And, um, anybody watching this now, you have to go <laughs> on to Love and Nudes because basically this is just like having the ultimate underwear to match your skin tone. And like you say, it's not, we don't just want beige. Like, <laughs> No, we don't. It can be for anybody, you know. It's <laughs> what people love about it is that it's it's wire free to. It's the most comfortable, pretty bra and yes. as they say in the the UK. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is, and it's um yeah, it's super comfortable. It feels like a second skin, and um it was it was made with love. Yeah, you and um. It's made um, like most of our bra and panty makers, mm -hmm. South America, and they're, uh, most of them are single mothers being paid a fair wage. So I was a single mother as well. And um, so that really resonated with me. So it's about, um, yeah, my passion is like supporting a community. It's like supporting things that matter, pe like, and people matter. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah that's 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 what that's what we're that's what i'm that's what i'm about yeah helping people to f see who they are like love who they are yeah regardless and it started off through skin tone and it, it, it brought into to me like the the mental health issues that i've gone through i feel like my business because my business helped me to face them yeah. and deal with them <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. I do totally believe, and it's it's interesting because, like we're saying, you don't just want underwear in beige. We yeah. 
in every colour. And it's like feelings. We want all our feelings, not just some of them. Thank you. Yes, all our feelings. So all the the feelings and all the colours, all the tones. It's like all the tones of yes, of life, right? Life, everything. It's about I do feel that this is like an over arching point here and so poignant and i wonder if there's all of these wonderful things are just coming together for you chantelle at the perfect time and you're just unlocking more areas of your business in terms of this whole beautiful concept that it isn't just about some of the picture it isn't just about some of the whole part it's about all of its parts and all of its parts having equal importance and equal opportunities and possibilities to be beautiful in yeah all, and live your be- live your best life yeah live yeah. your like live your most authentic mm-hmm. without apology um the bra like yeah the 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 bras and knickers mm-hmm. That's kind of what it, that's what it stands for. And nudes means love your nude, love your tone and love your, love other people's nudes and tones, whatever it is. So it's all encompassing, like you said. And if you want to check it, check us out. um, It's loveandnudes.com. So L-O-V-E-A-N-D-N-U-D-E-S.com. Oh, it's pure magic. magic. <laughs> it is. And all shapes and sizes, I guess. It's, it's- I'm working on the sizing yet. Like, this is my first production run. Um, so in the f- stay tuned in the future for, like, even more sizes and styles. This is my first line, actually. <laughs> it's so cool. But yeah. it, it is, it's about everything. Ah, yes. I love it. We can have yeah. all the Sunday dinner and enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes, totally. You don't have to like not see some of it, you know, yeah. you have your, have the whole dinner Definitely. And, and be good with it. And even if you don't enjoy some parts, it's okay. You know, <laughs> good. There's always bits of us ladies that I'm sure we'd be like, okay, can we change this bit? Can we change that bit? But it comes back to, again, loving all parts, doesn't it? You know, and it, it is, it's, it's, it's such a great message. I think you've probably got more messages and more subliminal and very obvious like empowering messages in your brand, in your business that, some are are there and there's even more perhaps that haven't even been touched on yet Chantel I do think that you're onto something oh thank you I think you see this conversation is inspiring me to like really yeah believe that like what else is going to come out of me (laughs) oh you you literally scratched the surface yeah yeah you're starting to um you know head into the deep end as it were but I, I do think that you're, you, you've nurtured something very beautiful and it's interesting how that's growing as you're also, I feel, developing your own awareness into how you feel and your emotions and, and what you're unlocking about yourself and what you're unlocking about your business. I think there's this beautiful parallel. Um, wow yeah, it is i'm so i see how you sense that that's like yeah. amazing because that's the truth of what's happening you know Budget. when i forward my business moves forward yeah definitely oh, i'm and excited for that the names that you've given as well to the products are so cool can you tell some of the people watching the interview what some of those names are there's the nutmeg and different like, oh yes <laughs> okay so there's um espresso i wanted really empowering names uh, for women to feel good in so there's espresso empress nice. that's our richest um deepest skin tone yeah. and then the next one is called knockout nutmeg i love that <laughs> And then the third one, that's kind of like a medium, it's Scotch Beauty. Yes. And uh, our like fairest shade is called Honey Love. Yeah. Yeah. So really loving, Mm -hmm. powering names. I want to give the products to, you know, make women feel good about who they are. Definitely. 
Oh my gosh. Well, do you know what, Chantal? I think we ought to have a part two because I would love for us to come back to another interview in a few months' time and find out how this journey just continues to evolve and just blossom in all of its ways because so much has happened. I do really, you know, want to say thank you so, so much for what you have kindly shared with us. And I do still think we have only scratched the surface. I do believe that there's probably a series <laughs> in <just laughs> us two on here talking about all of the wonderful experiences and things that you could share with um, ourselves, the audience, and, and, and listening to lots of different um, challenges that you have faced and lots of wonderful new opportunities that you've created for yourself as well. I, I do think there'd be so many things to share. So if you would love to come back, we would love to. Have I you. would, I <laughs> would. I so enjoyed this chatting with you. You're so easy to speak with Emily and I love it. <laughs> totally down for that. <laughs> I Let think we know. Kathy to thank, haven't we? Kathy Van Yes, thank yes, Kathy. yes. <laughs> She's such a sweetheart. Yes. She I'm going to send her a note because this was awesome. Thank you, Emily. No, thank you. And I'm sure that there are so many people who've listened to this and feel very grateful for hearing that they aren't alone and what you did share with us uh, throughout this interview. So thank you, Chantal. We will be back for part two. So hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and um, we look forward to the next um, next episode. Yeah. <laughs> thank you and take care. And we will speak very, very soon. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.